Time for sports and time for another Dave Day here on Community and EPA News. I'm Ken Kerr from SSP TV, sports director here with Dave Seaman, standard speaker, sports editor. We have some national stories to talk about, Dave, this week, but also that, that tie locally and um, Kobe Bryant passing away over the weekend in a helicopter crash. I mean, tragic story. And everyone always talked about Kobe in our area. I mean, he's a Pennsylvania guy, you know, played in Philadelphia, but also the fact that he played against the Hazleton area Cougars during the 1995 playoffs, a game in which the Cougars won in overtime. I mean, you're probably watching this if you're from the Hazleton area. You've heard stories about this or you've told stories about this as a player or a fan. Back when it was Kobe Bryant's last season in the NBA, we talked with some people involved in the game. And here's we're going to hear from Fred Barletta, the current Hazleton area high school athletic director. He was broadcasting the Cougar basketball games back then. And we'll also hear from Jeff Rush, current Penn State Hazleton men's basketball coach who was on the team. It was amazing because they were the favorite team that night. And Kobe had a marvelous, marvelous first half. He set a record, most points ever scored against the Cougars in one half of basketball. And uh, they kind of made some adjustments, slowed him down. They didn't stop him by any means. But uh, it, it was a really thrilling game. Went overtime, Hazleton comes away with the win. Brian Quinnick, uh, our 6'6 big guy. We played a lot of matchup defense, and Brian Quinnick would deny him in the post area. Unfortunately, he got into a little bit of foul trouble, which is, I guess, expected. And then we had to put, I, Coach Live put Terry Creamy on him a lot in the second half. And t Terry, Terry got two real big steals on him late in the game, less than a minute to go, two big steals. Uh, one with under 10 seconds, he swiped them. Uh, Ryan Lime got the ball on a fast break. He actually missed a, a fairly contested layup with about two seconds to go, and he missed it, so we had to play in overtime. Um, but yeah, Brian Quinnick, Terry Kringy, but it was a team effort. I mean, when Kobe Bryant took a shot, two, three guys were surrounding him at all times, and uh, it's just, just a great memory. And Dave, you had a story in the Standard Speaker on Monday. You talked with former Cougar coach Bruce Live, who was the head coach during that game and that playoff run, historic for the Hazleton area Cougars. What was it like? I mean, he's such a big basketball guy, too. said that was one of the biggest games in his career, as you're just talking with him. And did you hear anything different or different stories? I'm sure there's a lot of emotion from him as well. I, I just, I, I took out uh, what Bruce said after, what happened after the game is how uh, Kobe's father, Joe Jellybean Bryant, was a former NBA player and, uh, you know, Kobe's biggest fan, you know, throughout the years. And uh, after that game, um, uh, Jellybean brought Kobe into the Hazleton locker room, made him shake everyone's hand. And, uh, you know, uh, like Bruce said, Kobe probably didn't want to be there, but he learned a lesson then from his father. And that, I, I think that's a lesson that, you know, you, you see how he passed on uh, that, that love and respect for the game of basketball to his own, uh, his own daughter, uh, who tragically was on the plane or in a helicopter with him. And uh, that, that, that's what came out of it, the respect, level of respect that Kobe, he, wa he wanted to take your, your heart out, out of every game. There was no doubt about it from the high school level all the way up through the pros, the Olympics. Uh, but uh, he respected the game and he respected his opponents and uh, uh, the, the level of respect that Bruce had for Kobe getting a chance to play against him, uh, beating him was like the icing on the cake, so to speak, but uh, getting a chance to compete against a, a player of that caliber, uh, it only comes along every so often, and uh, that's why they still talk about it in uh, reverent tones until, until this day. Let's move to the current edition of the Hazleton Area Cougars boys basketball team. Dave, you've been covering them this season. Great week for them, a critical week for them last week, going to Crestwood, and they played a few other Wyoming Valley Conference games, winning all those games, and now they have some breathing room atop of the Wyoming Valley Conference Division One standings. It's breathing room. They won on the road, and they continue to win close games on the road. Uh, you know, they, they've just shown a knack for, like, sticking together. It happened at Crestwood. You know, they got behind by six points, uh, put together a fourth-quarter rally, and then uh, Scotty Campbell took over the game. They won that game. Struggled a little bit at Nanticoke in the following game, I believe on Thursday, uh, but came out of, with a win and then went to Berwick and took care of business there. So uh, while they're winning their games, other teams are knocking each other off and uh, Cougars start the week two games ahead of everybody. Uh, some more tough games coming up. It's a, you know, a week of home games this week. Uh, you know, I'm sure Coach Joseph, he's preaching a James Franklin mantra, you know, one game at a time, go 1-0. and all. And, uh, you know, keep doing that. And uh, by, the, by the end of the next few weeks, uh, they, they'll be looking pretty. And as for the girls, too, same thing, Dave. Have some breathing room now after um, being upset while well, losing to a good Berwick team. They beat Berwick the second time around. They have some breathing room on top of the Wyoming Valley Conference as well. Hoping to do a story on them, Dave, soon on SSP TV News and for our show out of left field. So look out for that. Do you have anything going on you want to promote at, at the Standard Speaker? Steve Stallone did a great job talking to Mike Brennan, the outgoing Hazleton area football coach. Uh, you know, uh, he's going to be missed around here because he, he put a lot of work in, a lot of time. Uh, the players responded to him. They were very, very disciplined. 
I, I, I was amazed every time I watched his teams play. You, you seldom see, saw, saw them get a penalty for a delay a game or an illegal procedure. That just shows you their level of discipline. And uh, you know, it, 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 we wish Mike well, obviously, in his new endeavor at uh, at Danville High School. And uh, now it'll be exciting to see who takes over the reins of the Cougars and uh, a lot of talent coming back there. And Dave, with Mike, he not only was able to build the Cougars up and get some wins in that respect, but he also built a culture, too. You really are always hearing about family there and just how hard they did work on the football field to not make those little mistakes. So read Dave's work in the Standard Speaker, and we'll keep you up to date on local sports, too, on SSP TV News as well.